We never prayed to the mountain for resources. We went to the poor, to the top. We kept going wells. And then he provides all that we need. That is the concept of our poor, not just the vision. And so, this ahupua of Honolulu is unhealthy. And, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I say this because everybody wants to have their plans and their agenda. Oh, what can we do with all this land? Let's build this, let's do that. And, and, and the Hawaiian goes, no. It's not our agenda. So, a couple months ago, before I took over the reins, I sat at Wakaloa Puna Point. That's uh, Fleming Beach here. Yeah? And then you have Havel right next. And I sit and I'm listening and I ask Honolulu, what do you want? Honolulu. You see Lipoa, Kumalo, you know, Punalao. And you sit there and, and I said, speak to me. Speak to me. And if you sit at Makaloa Pono Point, you see all the development over here and hardly anything here. And Honolulu spoke and said, I don't want to look like that. <laughs> and so what Honolulu was saying to me was, I'm dying. <coughs> Leave me alone. I want to be healthy. The three bays of Kiha gone already. Homokawai, Homokiana, Homokua. You got three left. Honolua, Homokoha, Homokana. And Honolua said, I've already learned, lost three siblings. And so it was very uh, adamant that for me to say, we as Hawaiians, we listen to the land. And uh, Alliance uh, Maone, uh, when he went, he said the, the Aina was screaming, it was in pain. And that's what I was experiencing too. And so I had no other option but to get involved and to restore the health of Honolulu. And once she is healthy, then she will tell us what she wants. That's the Hawaiian way. Hawaiians are not about entitlement, we're about permission. We ask. Even when the Halals would go into the forest here yeah, and go to Laka, they ask permission for the, for the ferns and all that they need. They don't just go in and say, oh, let's get this. They ask permission. The fishermen at Pawela, they would ask, which fish among you will come and feed my family? And they would come into the nets. Everything is by permission, not entitlement. When you come to visit me, you come to my house, you park your car, that's as far as you go. You don't go any further because you don't have permission. So, this is what Honolulu is saying. And so before we can do anything, we ask Honolulu, what do you want, Kupuna? she will tell us. And if she wants this, then we go. But if she doesn't, and part of safe on the law, we find out, oh, I have the same shirt. <laughs> but, you know. um, by getting involved with safe on the law, we save ourselves. You know, that's what happens. Uh, so in this whole Ahupua system, I believe, I really believe that it's going to be a collaborative effort. The landowner, state, county, the organizations. We have no other option. And we're basically saying, if you look at Maui, um, as I was sharing with the group, uh, in Hawaiian culture you have three pikos. You have the three, yeah? Uh, the piko is your belly button. That's your connection to your past. Then the genital is who will come out of you. And then the third is here. This is called the Kamanawa. Pretend I'm, I'm Maui. 
but this is the Kamanava. This is where the baby, when it's born, it receives its nourishment. This is the breath of Kyakua. Comes into the Kamanava, into the top of the people here, and he flows into our past. And he flows into our future. Once you get rid of this, there is no breath in it. Maui dies. So, say Honolua, that little part of the Kamanawa, the last open spaces on West Maui, we're telling all the people, we have to preserve this. Because once you shut this whole thing down, no one comes. I don't care if you have affordable housing. No one will be able, able to pay the mortgage if no one comes, if you're basing everything on tourism. We <coughs> owe the people a taste of Maui. And that's the last frontier on this one. Right? Okay. Any questions? <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> this is a tough one. Oh, a tough one. So, if a golf course was built there and it was left relatively open, would it still not be part of the healing of the land, and so something else has to happen, like before point that that part of the healing of the land. Uh, I'll, I'll answer part of that, and then Nikki probably has some, some things. Um, when they were going to develop the golf course, if I understood, they were going to use organic uh, so that it would be, it would be more eco-friendly. That's what I understood the golf course to be. Uh, like I told you, Hawaiians didn't play golf. <laughs> I mean, we're just, I cannot, <laughs> play golf. Uh, and it's interesting how many times when, when I hear about Honolulu and their history, it always goes back to ranches. And, that's not, our, that's not our history, that's somebody else's history. And the first golf course. First the first golf course. Golf course and the runway of the paw. Um, just to kind of give you an idea, that's the kind of golf course they were going to put there because it was going to be uh, organic and eco-friendly. Um, it was also the intent for the golf course to help pay for some of the upkeep of, of the Paw Point, etc. So they were trying to develop this area of Honolulu, the upper paw, with uh, to make it uh, to make it more um, culturally friendly. And uh, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to say, that's okay with everybody. Yeah, so here. I think, well, I mean, just. Is that okay to say that? Yeah. 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 Well, Culturally, there, there are significant, we've, we've um, been told there are significant uh, cultural features at that Lapro Point where they've talked about putting a golf course, such as the King's Trail. So there's potential to, uh, to rediscover um, and also do uh, other, uh, get archaeologists review the um, archaeology of the area and Restore and perpetuate some of the, the ancient point sites that are out there. So I, mean, I, I see alternatives to the area that are, and leaving it, I mean, honestly, I mean, based on a visual perspective as well, there's a difference between a golf course and a wild open space. And with so much of, of Maui being developed and manicured, and I mean, just speaking from a consumer, a gross consumer perspective. What is it that travelers want? How many golf courses do we have? On 18. All right, right 18. now. 18. And how many, how many wild open places are left? How many spots are there where the King's Trail could be restored? Where other, or other archaeological features? How many other places are there on Maui? 